so we're um, going to start <clears throat> with our speakers this evening. And we're going to start with Andy Worthington, author and filmmaker of The Guantanamo Files, the story of 774 detainees held in America's illegal prison. And then we'll move on to Candace Gorman, who is an attorney for one of the detainees. And then Deborah Sweet, National Director of World Camp Wayne. We will then open it up for <coughs> questions and answers. And we'd like this evening to be more of a conversation and, and dialogue, because we really do want to get in and, and wrangle about how are we going to shut down Guantanamo once and for all, and end indefinite detention. So let's welcome Andy Worthington. Thank you. Am I using this? Is that okay? Can we all hear? We have some uh, we have some good news from Guantanamo today um, because five prisoners were released, uh, five Yemenis, and four of these men were sent to, to Oman and one man was sent to Estonia. Um, if you know about the story of Guantanamo at all, I think you would appreciate that Yemenis being free from the prison is, um, has always been one of the real uphill struggles. Um, even uh, when President Bush in his second term was uh, releasing loads of prisoners, um, even he didn't release many Yemenis because um, the United States establishment as a whole has always considered Yemen to, be, uh, 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 to have an unstable security situation although they didn't really feel that it was safe to release prisoners there. On many occasions have been told they were going to be. And the fundamental problem of all those men who were approved for release by the Obama administrations, um, Guantanamo Review Task Force, a high-level review body in 2009, and who were told, you know, when we can facilitate it, you guys will be leaving here, we don't want to hold you any longer. And yet, they're held year after year after year after year. You know, the war in Afghanistan is kind of officially over, folks, so pretty much everyone should be released. So I'll leave it at that. I want, I want obviously, my fellow panelists to speak, and I want you all to have a chance to talk and ask questions and get a discussion going. So thank you very much. There are lots of things going on. Uh, I want to talk about some good news uh, first, and then I'll talk about my remaining client, and that's, not, that's the bad news part. The good news is my other client, my, I had two clients um, over these years. I always say two and a half, so maybe I have two pieces of good news. Because I had to, a client that I actually helped another detainee with who was also released. And um, so but my client, Al Jazawi, who I wrote a lot about, many of you um, have listened to my stories about him over the years. And he was one of the first to be, I, I want to say one of the first and almost one of the last, to be released by Obama in 2010, once he had this committee that reviewed all the men. Uh, Mr. Uh, Al Jazawi was released to the country of Georgia that was willing to take him on as a refugee. Uh, he was very grateful for that. Sometime in the last couple of months, for the first time, his wife and child joined him in Libya, which um, they had not seen each other for well, his daughter was only a couple months old. She is now 13. And his uh, wife, of course, hadn't seen him in all those years. And so they joined him in, in Libya. I, I still talk with Mr. Algenelli. We get on Skype and connect with each other every once in a while to uh, figure out what's going on. So that was, that's, that's the good news side. Um, the bad news side is my other client, Mr. Razak Ali. And I haven't written as much about him. Um, He's, he's just a nice guy. He's the one I wrote about. He loved the Harry Potter books. Um, you know, when I went to meet with him, we sat and talked about Harry Potter. Fortunately, I'd read all the books. So um, I was able to fill him in on things when the new editions hadn't quite been brought to Guantanamo and they were um, waiting for the next edition. Uh, he's, he's someone who's been considered compliant. Um, I don't think that that's meant in a, a bad way. He just doesn't argue, doesn't argue with anybody. He's just kind of a, a mellow guy. And the reason he's in Guantanamo is because he happened to have the misfortune of being in a guest house in Pakistan in 2002 
where someone else was staying that the government thought was a bad guy. And I say thought was a bad guy. Uh, this is Abu Zubayda. A lot of times you hear that name and it's always uh, in the media, it's like, this is someone who's really bad. Unfortunately, after they waterboarded them about 100 times, and I'm talking about Mr. Abu Zubayda, not my client, after they waterboarded him almost 100 times, they realized he really wasn't who they thought he was. And he really um, was not connected with Al-Qaeda, and he was not connected with the Taliban. And uh, sorry, it was just a little mistake. But my client's mistake was being in the same guest house as him. Because no, there's no evidence. There's no evidence of anything except that he was in this house. But to keep up the facade of the terrorists, you know, who these people are, um, he has to stay. And I'll tell you just a little bit about the, the process I've gone through with Mr. Razaka. Uh, we had a four-day hearing. And we call it a hearing, but my client wasn't allowed to be there. He's not allowed to know why he was even accused of being a bad guy. I can ask him questions to get at my defense of him, but I can't tell him what the government has told me. And so I, I say this because there's a couple weird aspects to this. And one is that there was only one witness, and I won't give you all the details, there was only one so-called witness who had anything to say about my client. And this was a man um, whose name was Muhammad Noor. I might have his name backwards, um, but I'm sorry. Uh, but whose name, uh, but who said within a day or two of arriving at Guantanamo, he looked at the, the photo book, the family photos, <laughs> and said, oh, the pers this person here, he used this nickname, and he used the nickname for my client, or not for my client, and he said, he was in the house with me. Well, this man was in the same guest house, and this man did go through the military commission and was charged with being in the military commission. And he was charged with um, crimes that were not crimes when he was charged. Um, and he pled guilty. And so, in, in, and he got a plea, and the plea was that he would get out in three years, and he's out. And as part of the, the plea, he had to admit that everything he had said previously was true. They didn't go through and say, is this true, is this true, is this true? They said, everything you said before is true, right? And he said, yes. And so my judge said, you know what? He just took a plea, he admitted everything he said was true, and he said that your client used this nickname. And he looked at his photo and said he was in the same house as him. And so therefore, that's, that's the end of the game. The other ironic thing was it wasn't my client's photo. Oh. <laughs> and when I was arguing to the judge, and they put the photo up, and I, I had seen the photo a few days earlier for the first time, and I said to the judge, that's not my client. And the judge said, but the government's saying it's your client. <laughs> and I said, but it's not. It doesn't look like him. I've met him. No one in that room, no one in that courtroom had ever seen my client. But if they had, if I could have gone and just taken a photo myself, they would see that that photo was not my client. We lost the habeas hearing. Uh, we lost the appeal. And just recently, I filed a cert petition in the uh, Supreme Court, and we lost the cert petition. No one cares. The judges don't care. If the government says this is the way it is, that's that's all that matters. With that, I will turn the microphone to Deborah. Since 2001, 2002, I think I've been paying a lot of attention to Guantanamo and all the related things. But I love doing these programs because I always learned so much that I couldn't make up. It's too bizarre to make up, but nobody has ever gone into the detail that Andy Worthington has 
to tell the stories of the prisoners and to have us get at least a little bit of an idea of what their actual lives have been. So uh, I'm very glad to be here with you two in particular on this tour. Um, again, I just want to thank all of our speakers for coming out tonight. And like Joe said, and I think our speakers spoke very eloquently to this point, it's on us, okay? 13 years, 13 years, way too long. Our, the ruling forces of this country have no interest in providing justice for these men who have been treated so unjustly. And so it's us, the people of conscience, that have to shut down Guantanamo and end indefinite detention. Thank you again, Deborah, Andy, and Candace.